Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm trying to learn some new stuff today, so I uh, hope you're hope you're willing to go along for the ride. Um, you know, if you keep an open mind and you look at other industries that you're not familiar with and watch guys TIG weld or MIG weld, whatever, you can pick up some tips. If you keep your eyes open and you're paying attention, you can learn some stuff. Now, I'm a little slow to learn sometimes, but I was watching a YouTube video several years ago, uh, and it's actually, I'll, I'll tell you the YouTube channel, it's called Welder Series. Uh, Paul Horton, it's, it's, they got a website, welderseries.com, and they make hot rod parts, little weld-on tabs, kits, four-bar kits, uh, sway bar kits, and all that. Basically, they cut the metal for you, and you weld it together, but they've got videos showing you how to do it. So I was watching this YouTube video years ago and watching this guy just pump the pedal. And he was banging these parts out. I mean, he, he knocked out four parts of three-quarter inch tube welded to like a one-inch tube in, I mean, a couple-minute video. It didn't seem like it was very long at all. And what he was doing was he was pulsing the pedal and resting the cup on the joint. So in other words, using a really short tungsten stick out, resting the cup, cradling it right in there on that saddle coped joint, and hitting the pedal, adding rod, scooting ahead about an eighth of an inch, propping the cup again, hitting the pedal, adding rod, backing off on the pedal. And it's kind of a, it actually it's kind of a dead simple way to weld because the heat never gets out of hand with you manually pulsing. So I thought, you know, there's something to learn there because uh, I'm going to talk about pulse settings on, on TIG inverters pretty soon, go into that kind of deeply on, you know, 33 pulses a second, what is that versus one pulse or 0.7 pulses a second or 500 pulses a second. But the old school way apparently that motorsports guys and automotive guys do is just pump the pedal. So let's take a shot at that today and see what we can do. Uh, for marking these pipes out, I bought some silver welders pencils. They're supposed to illuminate during welding or cutting. I think that's a bit of a stretch to say that, but on some surfaces they, they make a nice fine line as opposed to soapstone, but on this particular surface, good old soapstone did just as well or even better possibly. As long as I sharpen it up anyway, soapstone just fine. Sometimes I even color the area like that. So I just cut these with a grinder and I won't make you watch that. But I got a pretty decent fit. Cutting out little templates and then marking them out. And these nice little copper third hands are pretty awesome. And I wish I remembered or could find the email of the guy that sent them to me. I'd like to give him a big thank you again. But they're solid copper third hands and they, they provide a really good way to hold things down as well as a really good ground. So I got four tacks on this thing and let me go over how I would normally do this here. I've, I've got a number eight gas lens cup on here with a pretty good about a half inch electrode extension. And I would just try to twist my wrist as I went up to maintain a decent electrode angle. But that's not what we're going to do today. I'm going to put a five cup on there today and use a really, really short stick out. Actually, could have used a shorter one than I used. Even you could even put the uh, the electrode flush with the tip of the cup if you're using a five or even a number four size cup. And the benefit of that is using a lot less argon. But this is kind of how it goes. You can see what I'm doing here if you pay really close attention. I'm pulsing with the pedal and I'm propping the cup dead on the metal. So I'm propping the cup rigid on the pipe and pausing, pulsing the pedal and adding filler rod. And that looks something like this. Just to give you an idea of, of how the foot pedal looks, it's somewhere between a half a second and uh, once a second. Not, not as fast as once a second but a little bit more than, than half a, a pulse per second, I suppose. Just all depends on how comfortable you are and how you get hung up. But that is the benefit of pulsing manually is you can, you know, not pulse the pedal until you're ready, until you're in position to feed the filler wire. So here I've got just a little gap, so I'm not quite hitting it full pedal. Otherwise, I'm going floorboard each time I hit the pedal. Getting ready to swap hands here and go left-handed, and that is another benefit of pulsing manually if you're going to pulse. 
uh, because when you swap hands, generally you're a little bit more clumsy, a little bit slower. So I'm just going to pulse whenever I'm ready here with my left hand. Don't get me wrong, I prefer to weld right-handed whenever I can, but sometimes it's good just to practice, just to stay in practice with, with uh, left hand because there's always that time when that's pretty much the only, the only option. So I'm trying to not back off enough to leave any kind of crater or anything here, but back off the pedal enough that it definitely cools the puddle off. And I'm trying to maintain somewhat of a rhythm. Like I said, without the camera in the way, I could probably probably do one pulse a second with no problem. But working around a camera, it's going to be 0.7 pulses a second, something like that. It's all good under the hood, either way. Well, that's about it for today. Let me let me recap some things uh, that I might have forgot to say. Uh, you got to have the amperage pretty close if you're going to be pulsing the pedal. So what I did today is I used the one amp per one thousandths of thickness rule. So my wall thickness was 140. I set the amperage to 140, but then I added about 10% because I'm pulsing. So it makes sense to have a little bit more because I'm backing off half the time. So I set the amperage at somewhere around 150 to 160 on this simple little Lincoln Electric TIG 175 and it worked out pretty well. Uh, you, you need a sharp electrode, you don't need a very big electrode. A 332nd electrode is what I use today. 2% lanthanated, 2% thoriated would work fine, seriated would work fine. I just like a lan I like 2% lanthanated as an all-purpose electrode. It's not the best for every every situation. I just think it's the best all around. Filler metal, ER70S2 is what I use today. No reason to use anything else on just uh, regular old black iron like this. And so uh, 1 16th, 1 1.6 millimeter diameter helps to use that size. If you use too big of uh, filler metal, it just sucks the heat right out of the puddle and doesn't slip in there and doesn't, doesn't make for a good situation. Uh, cup size. Now I was just using a 17 air-cooled torch today, but I do have a stubby gas lens kit on it. You don't really need that for this particular scenario. Even though I sell them, like to sell you one, you don't need one for this. Um, I use a number five, I use a number five uh, cup today. A number five regular standard cup would be fine. And um, very, very short electrode stick out, almost flush with the tip of the cup there. And that's, that's a benefit. And with a number five cup, you only need maybe 10 to 15 CFH of argon, so that's a, that's a good thing. So there again, it's just another method to use, another possibility, another thing to think about. See you next time. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't done that yet.